there is a process. We have a procurement law in place. A minister does not sit down in his office to award contracts. Any contract that is above 1 billion naira is awarded at the Federal Executive Council. And before Federal Executive Council can take any contract, of course, it has to go through the public uh, procurement uh, uh, ah. division, mm -hmm. uh, which is outside the ministry. There was also one issue you talked about. The contract in the Guagwana community, which was only 1.2 billion, he said we inflated the contract to 5 billion and then inflated it to another 12 billion. For goodness sake, I want people to tell Nigerians the truth. Now, let me tell you three things that I represent. First, as a minister, I've been a minister from 2007. December 2007 was when I was appointed. And when I was going to government, three things I told myself. I said, first, I will defend the constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Number two, I said, I will defend the name of my family. I come from an humble background. I was trained by a humble father and a humble mother. What brought me to this level is the training they gave me, training about service, training about accountability, training about usefulness to society. The third one, I'm an elder in the church. I cannot afford to fail the kingdom, the Christian faith. Yeah, but you know I how, you know how this works? It's, it's like, it's, it's a ministry. Yes. Which, uh, I mean, you could be busy with a lot of things, mm. and somewhere in the rank and file, could slip in one or two things, which possibly could skip your attention. And so contracts can be inflated. You know why it's not possible? It's not possible. Anything that leaves the ministry to another department or another agency must go through the minister. So yeah. it's not possible. It's not possible. I am the minister that will even sign the paper that will go to Federal Executive Council. And so it's not possible. I gave these papers to all the media, you know, um, um, agencies that went with me. These are figures, verifiable figures. Why the facts think, are there. Why do you think the anti-corruption network wants to lie against the Niger Delta Ministry and against yourself? Well, I, I, I think something important that we should know. First, people still believe that we are still in Nigeria of yesterday, where people can just come up, you know, leveled unfounded allegations on people, and then they go and meet with them, discuss with them, and then they give them money. Look, Nigeria is transforming. Nigeria, we are, in, we are in a new Nigeria, a Nigeria where Mr. President believes that we must do things right now. And that God's the Rubibe do not belong to that fold, where I will discuss with people and talk about it. Because in my office, I stand to do what is right at every given point in time. And so what I'm saying, like when I started, I, I, I did say, that I support the idea of NGOs, credible NGOs, not NGOs that have leprous hands, not NGOs that are headed by people, people who have nothing, nothing to lose. They don't have nothing to lose. But I welcome those ones who have credibility to look into government and tell government that this is what they are supposed to do. Because also recently, they have been uh, distributing pictures of a house allegedly built for you by Cetraco. You know, have you seen those pictures? Yes, I've seen them. And when I saw them, I laughed. You know, I was talking about East-West Road. Cetraco that they are talking about. We are owing Cetraco, as we speak today, over 20 billion. Cetraco, as a company, we are owing them over 20 billion. East-West Road today, for this year, we needed about 109 billion to do jobs. But we are holding Cetraco as a company. We have three companies there. We are holding them over 20 billion. Now, look at it. Does it make sense? Does it make sense? You are holding somebody 20 billion, and then the person is going to build a house for you. Does it make sense? But is the house your house? The, the, the house is not my house. This is, the, this is the second house I am renting in Abuja. This is the second house I am renting in Abuja within the same estate. And so when they talk which, about which these things... Which house is the second house? This no, the, the one I'm staying now. Okay. The one they are staying where they say they have picture. Now, they even said Orubebe is living in a mansion. Now, I asked somebody, what is the definition of a mansion? My sister, 
The house I'm staying is an ordinary four-bedroom house. Like any other house, anybody can stay. Just four-bedroom house. And they call it a mansion. And that is why I have said, I said, look, I like NGOs that are doing credible jobs. And I even went to the creek with some NGOs. I said, let them come and see what I am doing there. Whatever I do there, it is not hidden. So how can you, how can you, you just sit down in your office, you cook up stories that are not in anywhere. Look at the other contract that I was talking about. He said the contract was five billion. When in actual fact, the contract was 1.2 billion. And he went on to say that even at that five billion, we inflated the contract to 12 billion. How bad? If you are doing a job of transparency, you must do the right thing so that Nigerians will know where their money is going. Okay. What is the condition of the East West Road now? Now, the East West Road project was awarded in 2006. I've talked about it over and over. Even in my last ministerial conference, I talked about it. It was awarded in 2006 as an intervention project to resolve the issues of the Niger Delta. And when it was awarded, it was not in the budget. And so 2006, 2007, 2008, 2009, it was, it was when the Ministry of Niger Delta was created. In 2009, that East West Road was transferred to the Ministry of Niger Delta as a way of fast-tracking it. As at the time we took over that project, in, it 2009. Was, in 2009, it was below 9% completion. We had to fight for funds. We have to fight to ensure that the project is not put in the budget. So it's from 2009, we'll be having steady funds, even though they are small, 24 billion, 20 billion, that's how we, we'll be having. Like 2012, we were given 24 billion when we needed 109 9 billion. Today, as it stands, we have uh, done over 50% of the, of, of the road. But the point is that I have also said it over and over. I've discussed with various stakeholders, and I've made a case to government and even to the National Assembly. I say, if we follow this process, considering the fact that this project is an intervention project, if we follow this pattern, we may not be able to complete this road in the next 10, 20 years. I said, we need alternative funding to be able to complete that project. And that's what we're doing. Mr. Obebe, you were quoted recently as describing the road, the east-west road, as a dam. Mm. But you say you've done 50%. Why did you describe it as a dam? Yeah. Now, you know, when the flood came, the flood swept away a lot of the job that was done. You know, the east-west road, more of the road is in a swamp environment. And that brings us to the issue of the cost of producing, constructing roads in the Niger Delta. First, you have to create land, which means you have to excavate and fill it with sand and laterite. And then you allow it to sediment for one rainy season to get it settled before you do the upper lane and the real construction. Now, when the flood came, most of the areas that they have done some filling, the water just swept them away. And in some of the places, the road cut into two because of the force of, of the, the whole area, you know, was submerged. Yeah, water. because we saw the headlines. And so, so some of you I said got there, God's and the statement I made was that, I said, well, the East-West Road has become a dam now because of the effects of the flood. And uh, the president said, look, we must do something. As we speak now, my engineers are on ground, the contractors are on ground. These are contractors that are working selflessly. These are contractors that are owing banks billions of money. We have not been able to pay them. Banks are on their neck. And, then somebody, and somebody is coming to say that people that are owing banks, banks are on their neck, we are owing them, and then yeah, somebody but... will come and build a house for me. Does, does it make any sense?